the Labrador, a coastal jigsaw of islands and shoals, of narrow channels and scattered settlements. For fishermen, it is memories of rugged shores, cool summer days, and great voyages of fish. And it's a longing for the coming of July and the steam down north. But this was a strange summer on the Labrador. The summer, the longliners deserted their traditional grounds and headed for shoal water. The inshore boats were cleaning up. The fish were right in on the rocks, driven in, it seems, by what the fishermen call dirty water. It's got another more colorful name, slub. While the outside grounds were choked with the stuff, inside the water stayed clear for the most part, and the small boats did well. The longliners were left with little choice. They too headed for the shallow water. Among them, the Omega-2, a longliner from Trout River on the northwest coast. In by the rocks, two of her crew bring their dory alongside a fleet of gillnets. I talked with the skipper of the Omega-2, Roger Han, about the troubles the longliners were having. How are the, uh, how are the other boats doing? All pretty much the same? Well, everybody's doing nothing right now. A lot of boats got their gear kept on board, waiting for it to change. Inshore boats are getting a little bit of fish up till today. Now, right now, we're, we're uh, fishing alongside of them now with, uh, with the, the lifeboat. It's kind of unusual fishing so close to the rocks for yeah. a, a longliner. Yeah, we've never tried this before. But we've got uh, 4,000 two days now fishing inside. We wouldn't get anything outside. Fish seems to be hanging closer to the land or just more scarce. And the slub in the water is more severe than other years. So in what depth of water are you, are you getting the fish? The last day, I think two or three fed them was best. So there's not much water there for, for a big boat? No, I, I had two nights ashore now getting nets off my propeller. She can't maneuver amongst the gear. Uh, I just went in to pick up a small boat and snag gear the other day. The small boat that you're using, is it? Uh, how's, how are you making out? <laughs> well, the small boat's not designed for fishing. It's just designed for carry around on the roof to the long liner. But we've, uh, we've made a week's pay this week. A bit hard on the boys of not having an outboard motor on or anything, having to row her around. Yeah, good exercise. <laughs> you know, you hear sometimes about the small inshore fishermen being uh, annoyed at the, at the bigger boats coming in on their grounds. Do you find any of that up here? Well, uh, no more annoyed than they'd be with the more inshore fi fishermen. It's more crowded. I guess they don't come out to... They don't want more gear there in the, the ground support. There's only a certain amount of fish, and it's very small patches of ground where the fish are. But have you had run any problems with uh, the small inshore fishermen where you're setting your gear? No, no. Fishermen are pretty uh, cooperative amongst each other. One guy will help the other guy. Only a few hundred pounds of fish from two fleets of gillnets hardly a bumper catch. Especially when you consider that when Roger came to the Labrador for the first time, four years ago, he landed 80,000 pounds in just 15 days. But there was no slub that year. Well, we're gonna haul uh, a couple of fleets of gear that I got out there just to, to find out what's going on out there. Well, in case the water cleans up. How bad is the, is the slub out there? Well. As bad as I've ever seen. Has it been a problem on the Labrador before? Yes. You know it? Yeah, it's a common problem. It's usually uh, two or three weeks and we'll clean up. Usually the first part of the year is when we have the biggest problem. On it. Outside the shelter of the islands, there's a freshening breeze and a bit of a lock as we reach the first fleet. And soon, it starts showing up. Slub. It's a funny little word, but it's just right, too. 
Not only is it the perfect description for the foul slime itself, but it also sums up the disgust that fishermen feel for it. Is it always as bad as this one? Always. I yeah, hope not. Yeah. When, you, when, when you hit the slob, is this what it's like, is it? Yeah, this is what it's like. This is pure slob, all right. Anything you can do about it? Hey? Okay. Anything you can do about it? No, I set it back again. Maybe rig up a, some rubber flickers on the hazard. Clean it up. Knock it out. It don't matter. Until the water cleans up, it's going to get in again anyway. What do you do? Just haul them in and set them out again, do you? Yeah. Well, we could probably carry them in shoal water to clean them up a bit, eh? Fish just won't mess in nets that are slumped up. Is that what happens? I don't know if they can feel the slump or they can see it. In the nighttime, I guess they can see them, but they don't get in. Hey, but you get, do you get fish at all in, in, in gear that's slumped up? Sometimes you might get some, eh? If it's a lot of fish strikes. And then when it, uh, when it goes, how, does it go quickly? Oh, yeah. Go in a couple of days. Everything's cleaned up again. Yeah. Yes, if it cleans up. Seems like it's all up and down the coast, though, this year. Right up to McCook, if you got the same trouble. Folks are all coming back from Smoky, I think. No fish up there. Or it's bad water up there. As it turned out, the water never did clean up. Up and down the coast, no matter where they went, the story was the same. Makovic, Smoky, Frenchman's Island. Not much water here, you can see bottom. Rather than go in the hole, the longliners went home a lot earlier than they'd planned. For them, the Labrador was a disappointment. But it didn't disappoint everyone. The center for the summer fishery on this part of the coast is Black Tickle. The past few summers, a Portuguese ship has come here to buy fish. And this year was no different. You can see the Portuguese boat there in the background, behind that cluster of longliners. These longliners didn't even bother to go out today. The slub is so bad. Many of them have their gear on board. But that's not to say there was no fish, not by a long shot. It was the trap boats that kept Black Tickle going. Twice a day, there were lineups at the wharf. The setup for selling fish to the Portuguese in Black Tickle the last few years has been what the fisheries people like to call over the wharf sales. The idea is to keep as many of the jobs as possible for local people. The fishermen sell to the Black Tickle plant run by Nickerson's. In the plant, the fish is put through splitting machines, washed and graded. This gives a summer's work for about 75 people. Men and women from Black Tickle, Domino, Spotted Islands, Cartwright, even as far away as Happy Valley. If the fishermen were selling directly to the Portuguese, all this work would be done by the crew of the Portuguese ship. The split fish is brought by truck to the Portuguese ship. From here, it's taken below and salted down. The system has worked well, but this year there was a problem. The Portuguese did not want any fish under 18 and a quarter inches. They said they couldn't sell it back home. So the black tickle plant refused to buy anything under 18 and a quarter inches from the fishermen. And thousands of pounds were dumped at the wharf. That got some fishermen very upset. It looks ridiculous to me. I think there should be something done about it. I think there can be something done, too. What would you like to see done? Uh, I mean, for instance, couldn't the fish be given away to the, uh, the fishermen who are salting their, their fish in their stages? Well, I don't know. By I suppose the way the fishermen looks at it, if they got to, to pick out their large and sell it, well, they don't feel like then uh, and a lot of people are going to come back and split and all small, or you won't get the price for it anyway. And I suppose they're not prepared for it. It comes down here in small boats or something. They haven't got nowhere to secure it, and uh, there's not much they can do about it. 
but I think they should have some kind of a freezing unit there so they could, uh, if they can't split it, if they got liquor splitters there and can't split it on their 16 there, I think they should have something there and felt, there's no, no fisherman expecting to get so much for small fish as he is for the, for the large fish. There's nobody looking for that at all. Make it better for everybody if they was, uh, you know, securing the small fish. There's a lot of people looking for jobs, and they'd be getting jobs at this small fish, and one thing another, these fishermen was only getting 10, 15 cents per pound uh, you know, for this small. Well, it'd be a lot better than throwing it away. Leonard Brown's crew was one of several from the tip of the Great Northern Peninsula who fished traps this summer off Black Tickle. Despite the problems with undersized fish, they all did well. At the peak of the season, the black tickle plant was producing 65,000 pounds of split fish every day, most of it coming from traps. As a matter of fact, the trap crews from Newfoundland did better than some of the local black tickle crews. Like the longliners, many black tickle fishermen ran into trouble with slug fouling their gear. So they had to take up their nets and watch as the Newfoundland crews landed the big catches. One of the black tickle fishermen who had problems was Bill Dyson. Bill, there seems to be a lot of fish coming in out of the traps, but uh, you, you haven't got your trap in the water. What's the story there? Well, we took it up a couple weeks ago, but uh, we had it on Aeroco for a while. Then we put it over in Sandy Bay. We done very good over there, but it got so dirty. We took it up, tried to clean it up a bit. Slub in the water again, is it? Yeah, yeah. So what have you been fishing now, gillnets mostly? Yeah, gillnets, yeah. We got 27 gillnets right now. How have you been doing with them? Uh, not at all. They're, they're loaded right down the slope too, yeah. So you're more or less waiting for the water to clean up? That's right. We're waiting now to see what's going to happen. I'll say another week this time the water cleans up a bit and we might sit travel again. You're a black tickle fisherman. How do you how do you find, uh, you know, your, your dealings, your relationships with the fishermen that come up here from Newfoundland? Oh, we don't, we don't have too much problem with them. You know, I suppose there's fish out there for everyone, so if you, you make the right move to get them, that's it. If you don't, if you don't well, I mean, you just got to put up with it. You know, a lot of fishermen from Newfoundland there, the summer coming on side traps, they're doing real well. A lot, lot better than the fishermen now from Black Tickle are doing right now. But they put them in the right place, I guess. So you might learn a few things from them. Yeah, maybe so. You might grab some of their births next year before they get up here. I'll say maybe next year the fish might go in some other spot, you know. I mean, every year he goes different locations. Some years he goes in Sandy Bay, and some more years he goes in up in the Buit area. So he hardly knows where, where to go for him, you know, until he comes in. So you don't mind the, the fishermen coming up from Newfoundland and, and uh, taking big loads of fish where they're having problems, right, right in your no, own backyard? I don't see, you know, I don't see the, any problem with them coming up here. You know? we don't have, I don't have too much problem with them anyhow. No problems between fishermen just between the fishermen and Mother Nature. The dirty water and the idle time it forces on the fishermen. Nothing to do but relax, get a bit of sun, maybe clear up that backlog of laundry and hope that things will get better. We're heading out from Black Tickle to Bato, four miles down the coast. That's where most of the trap crews from Newfoundland are staying. Henry Brown of Cooks Harbor and his son Clyde are giving us the ride. Just outside Bato, we meet another Cooks Harbor crew, the Field Brothers. It's early evening. This is their second haul for the day. This morning, the fields dried up 6,000 pounds in this trap. The fish aren't so plentiful this evening, 1,000 pounds or so. Still, they're not doing too badly when you consider it's their first time on the Labrador. What made you fellas decide to uh, come up here from Cooks Harbor? Well, we had a very poor season back home, and so we're very proud of the fish down there from the 
boat, long liners, or whatever, they decided to make a trip down there. So you had a, you had a four season, just one four season, they just had to come up here, did it? That's right. So how'd you get up here? How'd you get your gear and your boat? And we sent our gear and traps, a uh, uh, trap up on, the, up on a boat, a bigger boat, a salmon boat, and we drove up those two boats there. So this is your first season up in uh, in Bado, isn't it? That's right, sir. So how's the fishing been so far? Up there? Yeah. Real good. Real good. Made an excellent trip. When did you come up? We came up about uh, uh, two weeks ago, Tuesday past. So your trap hasn't been in the water that long? No, not that long. So how, how well have you done in the last two weeks? Uh, right now we got about... Uh, 90,000 pounds. 90,000, that's pretty good, isn't it? That's for four of us. Yeah. How's that compare with what you were doing back on the, on the island? Oh, that's uh, triple that. Is that right? Back on the island. Triple what they'd catch back home in Cook's Harbor. And on grounds that none of them have ever fished before. How did you decide now? This is your first year up in, in Bato. How, how do you decide who gets what first? How do you decide where to fish? Oh, well, uh, there's lots of birds around here and they haven't been taken up, so. And some people are sure they're from Bato after showing us some good birds, but it seems to be safe. And we, we don't know too much about the place. Uh, them people are nice enough to, to show us the place before I trap and we drop a lucky spot. Are there many people who live in Bato uh, fish traps or? Uh... There's uh, not too many uh, cod trap fishermen here. Fire six crew. So there's no problem getting a, getting a berth? No. Although some are better than others. I told some people back in the Cook's Harbor see this, they, this place might be blocker fishermen next year. Yeah, well, there's a few down there right now. There's some other boys down there in Cook's Harbor. They're doing pretty good. People from Wild Boy. Close to Cook's Harbor. They're doing well too. We've all done pretty good. We left the Field Brothers to dip up their last few fish and headed on into Bato. The name means boat, and boats are what made Bato. Schooners by the dozen used to anchor in this harbor, floaters from Conception and Trinity Bays, making their summer voyage on the Labrador. Nowadays, Bato Harbor is busy with longliners and trap fishermen like Henry Brown and the other Cook's Harbor crews. There aren't as many longliners this year, what with the slub in the water. Yet wharf space is at a premium. The old stages and rooms are crowded with trap skiffs. There's new life in Bato, where just a few years ago, there were just empty buildings. When the schooner fishery began to die out, so did Bato. And resettlement nearly finished it off. But a handful of Labrador fishermen kept coming back every spring, and they kept Bato alive. Alan Dyson was raised in Bato and has kept coming back. We started off with salmon this first day, and uh, this wasn't, wasn't much of a place for salmon. So we get a few salmon until fish come, and then uh, we started codfish. And then one way, the, the codfish died away, so we had to continue at salmon. And, and there was no codfish for a few years, but uh, one boy just started to come back again, eh? And now, now the salmon has started all the way, so... I don't know. Comes and goes. Comes and goes, right. Did you ever uh, winter here? Did you ever spend the winter? Yes, we spent 11 winters here, boy. 11 winters. And the reason that we left, I suppose, uh, was resettling time. And then we had a problem getting teachers, you know. So this is the big, uh, this is one of the big places for the summer fishery. You used to have a lot of Schooner just come up from the island. Oh, what? Lord, yes, they were. <laughs> a lot of guarantee. Just this, this, uh, this is the inside part of the harbor area. Yeah. Well, the outside part out there, there'll be 20-odd uh, schooners out there some years. Uh, maybe, I wouldn't say too much if I say 30-odd. 
You'll be uh, something like that anyway. Must have been some sight. Oh, man, Lord, yes, eh? All them boats had uh, crews, what? Eight and 10 and 12, 14 minutes aboard some of them. Two or three motorboats and four or five car traps. N not every one of them there, but some of them did. Yeah. So they come up and they'd, they'd fish out of dories uh, and, and uh, outside, wouldn't they? Is that what they oh, do? Oh, that, that'd be the banking schooners you're talking about. Then, well, yeah. we call the bankers rowing in the dory, eh? Two hands in the dory. Mm -hmm. that, that'd be their fall fishing. They wouldn't come here until uh, around the end of August. And they, they'd be here then until, well, I see them here till, uh, after the 20th of October. See them here? Yeah. And we're, right where we're to here now, there's old liver factory. I thought I used to boil the liver. And, uh, Cod livers, is it? Cod livers, yeah. Cod livers, yeah. Oh, yeah. But he would not to say what other liver to say. <laughs> uh, and that's where there's two right there. I don't know, perhaps, perhaps it's old furnace there now. Yeah. He'd uh, collect all those those livers from the schooners, take it in his factory and boil it, and make, make cod liver oil. How many crews would there be from Labrador, you know, aside from the floaters from the island, how many crews would there be here from uh, Labrador? Well, from Labrador, boy, I suppose, at, at them times, uh, I say eight or ten or take the best one, you know, most. As I know I fished your father when I was a boy, eh? And we was handling crews then, eh? There was only two, there was only one Labrador man had, had traps. That's my uncle, Uncle Josh Stoice. He had two traps. And then the goose bay started, and the airports, and so, so that took all the crews. The Labrador crews as well as the oil crews, took them all. So the fishery was slacked off here slacked for a off. while? I mean, a summer or two, there was nobody fishing at a bat, only myself and Aaron Dyson, that's my cousin. T two trap crews, that's all was there. You got a new type of fishery here now. The longliners are coming up from the island. When did that all start up? Right, uh, that started up now, boys. I say about 12, 14 years ago. Yeah, they, they started to come back here. They, when they come back, most of them had all gillnets, eh? So we sure fellas didn't know what a gillnet looked like. We had to tell them, you know, didn't know what they looked like. And my cripes, uh, when they come here, they used to get all kinds of fish in the gillnets. We was a couple of years and never had none. So uh, we, we got some, finally. After a while. Some fish got, or some gillnets? Huh? You got some gillnets or you got some fish? We got some gillnets and then we got some fish. There wasn't that much in traps them years. I don't know why, but there wasn't. Jeez, I'll never forget the first gillnet ever I saw it. It wasn't a gillnet, it was four sevenths. <laughs> Brought them off, off there to place the calls and knobs. Throw the rock on each end, let go two nets. I said, good boy, boys. I said, our, our sevenths are gone. <laughs> never see them no more. But geez, we went back uh, sometime in the evening after supper. But he, we got 12, 14 candles out of four nits out there on those sunkers out there, knobs, they call it. You on something then? No, he's on something then, that's right. <laughs> we just started the gillnets. Yeah. But uh, you don't fish gillnets now, though, do you? Oh, yeah, we got some. We don't use them that much. Yes. Oh, we don't have to use them, you know. Yeah, because the trap fish is back. That's the trap fish is coming back now, yeah. So I suppose it must make you feel a bit better to see Bato coming back as a fishing Oh, fishing God, place. yes, eh? Yes, boy. Sure do. Yeah, been good here this summer, I tell you. Very good. Very good last year, the year before, and like that. Like I say, going on now. This past six, eight years, I've been coming back all the time. Every summer getting better. For Alan Dyson, for Batto, things are getting better. The Labrador fishery is alive again. You might argue that things sure weren't better for the longliners this summer, but don't jump to any conclusions. The gillnet fishery has been good down here, and it will be again. The slub will disappear, and the fish will be back. And don't forget that the Labrador didn't let everyone down. This was a very good summer for a lot of fishermen, including some first timers. For them, next summer on the Labrador, can't come too soon. <laughs>